morning everybody and welcome to our 10th birthday at the Tullamore Court Hotel. Today was made possible by a lot of volunteers. I'd like to thank everybody for coming here. I know it hasn't been easy for a lot of patients to travel and we really appreciate your support and we'd like to thank you very much. We need to understand that chronic Lyme disease is something more than infection. Infection, it's starting uh, some process, uh, some chain reaction in our body. And the longer infection is in our body, we need to understand that we need to look at the other problems going on. Maybe on the beginning, when infection started, like uh, first weeks, maybe month, you know, killing bacteria only is a good strategy. But after a period of time, after years, you know that killing strategy only is not enough. This strategy will not help majority of the patient. So we need to be open and to see something more. And um, it means also that traditional infectious disease approach is not able to help majority of the patients. Just killing bacteria will not solve all the problems that they are going on in the body of the patient. But the sensitivity of all these Western blots, all the Western blots, is just around 43%. So that's not sufficient enough to diagnose Lyme disease by Borrelia Western blot. Although you know Lyme disease is not a laboratory test diagnosis, it's a clinical diagnosis and you know we need to, over one hour time to talk with you about your symptoms, differentials, the doctors don't have the time to talk with you about that. So um, it's a clinical. Laboratory is not proving Lyme disease. That's a misunderstanding. Laboratory is a helpful tool to support the clinical suspicion for Lyme disease of the doctors. That's the way we are doing with all laboratory tests in the world not going to this field, but for therapists, very important also to do treatment against the biofilms. If you cannot break up the biofilms, you cannot destroy Borrelia, that's clear. These are intelligent bacteria, they protect each other and they are intracellular. So therapies need to go intracellular, it's not extracellular. Once infected with limes, it has a brief uh, blood-borne phase and then concentrates very fast in the connective tissue, inside the neurons and ganglia, inside the lymph nodes in the fascia and other tissue and organs, especially in the brain. In Lyme disease, for instance, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, mental illnesses, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, uh, and uh, etc. And I think very important are the symptoms, which are also associated with the disease, mainly in the brain, like uh, forgetfulness, confusion, brain fog, and uh, let me say in the joints, uh, representing uh, um, uh, arthritis. So the cause for these multiple systemic problems of Lyme disease, what you heard all day, is a persistent chronic infection the production of biotoxins and neurotoxins and you have to aware of this uh, this situation every second of your life the uh, bacteria inside your cells if you have limes produce biotoxins and neurotoxins and this again uh, cause chronic uh, inflammation and liberate inflammatory cytokines which do another uh, destruction and uh, the manifestation uh, of the disease and in different organs. So Lyme disease is also called the great imitator because very many diseases can hide behind uh, Lyme disease. What makes Lyme disease so specific and why? We heard about and a lot about this. This is uh, the Borrelia itself, it has three layers and it's not very much uh, very well recognized by the immune system. It does not need uh, oxygen. It can uh, persist so that it, uh, and it has a very, very slow dividing time so that uh, antibiotics cannot kill it. 
because antibiotics are only effective in bacteria which have a dividing time of 20 minutes. Borrelia has a dividing time of two to four days. So that means you have to, have to treat Borreliosis uh, at least uh, one, one and a half or two years, and nobody would survive this. Only the Borrelia would survive it. Now, what's the difference between cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells? Well, cytotoxic T cells can only eliminate infected cells if they recognize the infected cells. And it's, it's logical because if cells are infected by an intracellular pathogen, they will display some kind of information on their surface. So they are what we call marked, and then the cytotoxic T cells can eliminate them. But the bacteria kind of spreads and doesn't kill you quickly. That's the problem. It kills you slowly if it's not diagnosed. And over years and years and months and months and years and years, it's the combination of untreated infection and that cascade of infection, inflammation and damaged immune system that, that I think is, is creating a problem. The best way to maybe get your body in order and in health is to actually re-innovate the microbiome or the bacteria in your gut and in your body. So this is about the microbiome. And the microbiome can be considered almost its separate organ. Now, we are, and I believe this to be true, that we are at a new scientific forefront where you are only beginning to understand the importance of the microbiome not as a collection of just bugs and viruses and bacteria and fungus, but all together as a vital organ, almost as sort of the coordinator, the manager, that has much to do with our health and balance as, let's say, our heart and our brain. You look so well, you must be okay, it must be in your head. Instead, maybe it's just we have to look further by what you can't see. You've been a great audience. It's great to see you all here. Thank you. Some of the doctors contacted us, you know, to say that they wanted to come to speak here today, and all that is free. You know, we don't pay for them to come because we're all volunteers, and it's only an awareness group with no money, no funding. So all the doctors donate their time for free, and they pay for their own um, accommodation and flights to get here as well. So you know, that's all free work that they they do for us as patients. It's, they're, they're fantastic. My daughter got sick on the 4th of February 2012, I even know the date, and um, it was September 2013 before we knew what she had, so it was Lyme disease. Um, I had seen TikTok Ireland was outside the Oroctus with uh, Dr. Armin and there was three other TikTok representatives, and that highlighted my awareness, oh, there is a group in Ireland, I contacted TikTok, and um, then, you know, I knew there was others out there like us, you know, trying to find an answer, trying to get somewhere to um, help my daughter. And it was through TikTok was our, our first contact. So that was fantastic back in September 2013. And now it's 2019, so we're giving back. Your daughter's obviously well? Yes, um, she's just done a, completed a year of college. Uh, she was in a wheelchair. She, she started out her, her life, I suppose, uh, from lying in a wheelchair. So we went to, through the help of Armin and also through the help of Dr. Stram, my daughter is walking. She did college and she goes on a J1 next Friday for four months to San Francisco. So, you know, without uh, their help and support, I don't know where we'd have been. So it is TikTok's 10th anniversary. Um, I'm forever grateful to Jenny O'D for creating TikTok 10 years ago because without Jenny, uh, there would be no TikTok and uh, we would have never got the support that we needed back in September 2013. We'd probably still be doing the circuit um, and wondering what, what is wrong and looking for help. So thank you TikTok. So I'd like to also thank everybody who has come here today and I'd like to thank all the doctors and the stands who donated their time for free and of course to the members, you know, to, without with the, the members we wouldn't have a conference in the first place. So thank you to everybody, thank you to all our volunteers, to all the people that helped today to make it possible. Thank you very much. Of the many advocacy groups I have met with and worked with, I can say that TikTok, TikTok is one of the best uh, here in Ireland. They do an incredibly professional job. They're very well organized. The uh, event was phenomenal. 
both in who they invited and how they ran the, the event. And I want to give them a huge congratulations for their sustainable 10-year effort in trying to make changes in the Lyme epidemic. TikTok conference is something pretty unique in Europe. I'm lecturing uh, uh, a lot, uh, basically every weekend uh, on conferences. And this is uh, the only conference where uh, really patients uh, manage to, to organize and to invite every year uh, good uh, lecturers. Uh, so on one hand we, we feel uh, really the motivation of the patients community and we are thankful uh, that, that, that we can contribute. And on the other hand it's also important uh, for us as lecturers because we also have good networking. We see each other and we also attend to other interesting lectures. The most important message uh, today and every year is that uh, there are solutions, but it's, it's very, very complicated and it's a pathology, a sickness that demands a very individual approach. I've been seeing now every year uh, when, I, uh, when I participate, when I come back, and, and I see many of them really getting better every year, so it's not uh, only a meeting of, oh, uh, of showing what uh, difficult pathology it is, it's also a meeting of, uh, with, a, with a message of hope. It's a perfect organization. I know how much work it is to organize a conference. It's, it's unbelievable. People really don't realize, but it's really day and night, with especially the last weeks. So thank you for doing this and uh, thank you for inviting us because basically we only have to come here give a lecture and, and that's it, but uh, so many work to do next to this, so uh, thank you and uh, well, if I'm invited next year, if I'm invited, I will come back. Today was the best day in my life the and uh, we feel so good here in Ireland, we come back surely and we hope that we can help more patients in Ireland. Fantastic, TikTok Fantastic. Island, come on, yes. forward, full support from Germany. Yes. Happy birthday Happy for your 10th anniversary. Woo! Completely surprised of how amazing you organized the event and um, also about the content of speakers and like um, you have an amazing support, um, especially also um, like from everyone around here, like lots of patients here, really, really interested, got really positive feedback from everyone, so it was a great experience. Keep up the good work you're doing and um, keep up fighting against Lyme and keep up fighting for awareness of this disease. A happy anniversary TikTok, you have meant the world to me in terms of getting a diagnosis and getting treatment and getting my life back. Thank you so much. TikTok Ireland's fantastic grouping for helping an awful lot of patients who are completely lost, don't know where to turn to and all the rest of it. Congratulate TikTok on 10 years anniversary. Thank TikTok for all they've done for me over the last few years. If it wasn't for TikTok, I wouldn't like to imagine where I would be. So thank you, TikTok. I'm delighted to be here at TikTok Ireland's 10th anniversary. I wish them all the very best success. Congratulations on bringing Lyme disease into the awareness of the Irish population. Really informative and very clear, also very scientific based, which it's great to raise awareness about Lyme disease. It brings together um, patients, uh, Lyme disease sufferers with doctors, because sometimes they might feel lost. So it's good that you can link those two fields together. We were a bit involved last year and this is a bit of a follow-up and it's, it's gone really well. It's been great talking to people. Happy 10th anniversary TikTok. Happy 10th anniversary to TikTok Ireland. Well done to everybody. They're amazing. You did a great job as always and uh, yeah, great. Well done. I thought the event today was fabulous. I think it was, it was well orchestrated. I think you had great speakers and I, I'm just so grateful and I have gratitude for being here and being aligned with this group. Happy 10th anniversary TikTok. Keep up the fight, keep up the work, don't give up. Our patients and everyone here is, is looking for you to keep it up. My wish is that someone, powers that be, would realize that we have a serious problem in Ireland. And um, I know for the future, we have loads of volunteers coming on uh, that will keep uh, TikTok alive and going strong for the next 10 years.